Welcome to the series, my small showman's engine needs some repairs, this is part 8. Making a new centre fitting to hold the flywheel to the crankshaft, as I lost the previous one in the workshop. The good news is that my replacement is an improvement on the original. Fitting the flywheel and test running using compressed air. Here's a shot of the flywheel with the new fitting in place. And here is a flashback to what the flywheel was like before I removed it from the engine. Not only was the paint quite awful, I thought that the centre boss was a bit too wide. Here's the flywheel looking quite resplendent with its new coat of paint. How big is the hole in the middle of the flywheel? Well, I'm not really sure. All I know is this piece of copper tube fits in it OK. I will use it as a starting point. Here's the metal that I'm going to make the centre boss out of. I think it is alum bronze. It's a little bit lighter than normal brass. And with this industrial type cutting tool, it machines beautifully. When I measure the flywheel, there is a ridge down inside the centre hole, 15 sixteenths of an inch from the outer part. And for that reason, I'm going to turn this piece to 15 sixteenths of an inch long. And according to my ruler, it now is 15 sixteenths of an inch long, but I think I'm going to have to machine it shorter. I'll do that later, and I'll tell you why. Now it's time to turn the external diameter to fit in the hole in the flywheel. I don't know what happened to the original piece that was in the flywheel. I remember tapping it out of the flywheel, and I haven't seen it since. I think it's time for a top tip. When you machine brass, or alum bronze, or anything like this at a high speed, the chippings fly everywhere, and they are very sharp. Sometimes I use a piece of paper to deflect the chippings, sometimes a paintbrush. The only problem with the paintbrush is if you catch it in the chuck, the chuck's likely to throw it at you, and it will be full of sharp, nasty pieces of brass. According to my digital caliper, the hole in the flywheel is 15.26 millimetres. I do not want this part to be a tight fit. It doesn't need to be a tight fit. So I'm reducing the diameter slightly so that it's a piston fit in the hole in the flywheel. What I'm doing here is taking a series of test cuts on the end until I get it to the right size, then I go all the way down. After I'd finished turning the part all the way down, you can see the ridge at the end. You will see why that is not important later on in the video. I turned the part around in the chuck, and here I'm parting off the excess metal. This is definitely not brass, it's very hard indeed. I do think it is alum bronze. The carbide tip tool that I used to machine this has a rounded end, but in the area of this component where it touches the flywheel, I need it to be perfectly square. So I'm using the parting tool to square up this part. I rounded the outer part with a file. This component is a plug that fits in the end, and the one you see is the original part. I didn't lose this. It's just a simple plug with an O-ring that presses into the end of the bush. Now what I need is a hole in the part to accept this plug. First I centre drill the part, then I use a half inch diameter drill to go all the way down. Because of the physical size of the drill bit, the lathe is running in back gear to slow it down. Finally, I drill a hole one eighth of an inch in diameter all the way through the part. Then I pull it out from the chuck, put a live centre in the other end of it, and part off the bit that I don't want. I need this component to be shorter so I can use the bolt to pull the flywheel towards the crankshaft. If this bush was too long, I couldn't do that and the crankshaft definitely needs to be right up against the main bearing to stop any side play on the crankshaft. Here is the finished item. As you can see, the plug is a different colour because it's tarnished brass. Once I've polished it up, it should look a bit better. Here I'm checking that the securing bolt fits in place, and now I have a potential kit of parts to allow me to fasten the flywheel to the crankshaft. The bolt on the right-hand side is the original. I've fitted it with the washer, and the flywheel is now ready to mount to the engine. I think the paint job was a success. It doesn't look all that good, but it looks just as good as the paint work on the rest of the engine. Time for a quick clean of the area behind the flywheel, because once the flywheel is in place, I won't be able to get at it. 
Very carefully, I fitted the flywheel onto the crankshaft, being really careful not to bash it into the wheel. I really do not want to paint this flywheel for a third time. I'm pleased to say that my fitting is a perfect fit in the hole in the flywheel, and here it is with the bolt in place. This clip shows what happens when the flywheel is not fully on the crankshaft. Slowly but surely I started to tighten the bolt, pulling the flywheel further onto the key on the crankshaft. Here I'm using a small box key with a screwdriver stuck through the cross hole, and now the preload of the flywheel against the bearing is about right, and it's spinning quite well. Maybe not 100%, but it's near enough for rock and roll. Geometrically speaking, the flywheel is not perfect, but I think it looks all right. I've seen flywheels on full-size traction engines that were a lot more wobbly than this one. Here, I'm lubricating the crankshaft. I lubricated all of the moving parts so I could run it like this. And that's it for the narration. All I'd like to say is stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. I'd better mention that the click you can hear is the ratchet of the mechanical lubricator. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.